So if you look at the trend with and the speed with which human genetics has progressed, we can now find thousands of genes involved in human cognition, in human psychology, in the emotions and the feelings that we used to think are uniquely learned. It turns out there's a genetic basis to a lot of that. So the uh, you know the, the the human genome has continued to elucidate through these studies of genetic variation so many different processes that we previously thought were you know something that you, like free will free will is this beautiful concept that humans have had for a long time you know in the end it's just a bunch of chemical reactions happening in your brain and the particular abundance of receptors that you have this day based on what you ate yesterday or that you have been wired with based on you know your parents and your upbringing etc determines a lot of that quote unquote free will component to you know sort of narrower and narrower uh, scale you know sort of uh, slices so how much uh, on that point how much freedom do you think we have to escape the 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 constraints of our genome. <laughs> You're making it sound like more and more we're discovering that our genome is actually has the a lot of the story already encoded into it. How much freedom do we have? I uh, you so so, so let, let me let me describe what that freedom would look like. That freedom would be my saying, "Ooh, I'm going to resist the urge to eat that apple because I choose not to." But there are chemical receptors that made me not resist the urge to prove my individuality and my free will by resisting the apple. Uh -huh. So then yeah. the, the next question is, well, maybe now I'll resist the urge to resist the apple and I'll go for the chocolate instead to prove my individuality. But then what about those other receptors that, you know? <laughs> that, that, so, that might be all encoded in there. So it's kicking the bucket down the road and yeah. basically saying, well, your choice who may have actually been driven by other things that you actually are not choosing. So that's why it's very hard to answer that question. <laughs> well, it's, it's hard to know what to do with that. I mean, if uh, if the genome has, um, if, uh, if there's not much freedom, it's... Uh... It's the butterfly effect. It's basically that in the short term, you can predict something extremely well by knowing the current state of the system. Mm -hmm. But a few steps down, it's very hard to predict based on the current knowledge. Is that because the system is truly free? When I look at weather patterns, I can predict the next 10 days. Is it because the weather has a lot of freedom and after 10 days, it chooses to do something else? Or is it because in fact, the system is fully deterministic and there's just a slightly different magnetic feel of the earth, slightly more energy arriving from the sun, a slightly different spin of the gravitational pull of Jupiter that is now causing you know, all kinds of tides and slight deviation of the moon, et cetera. Maybe all of that can be fully modeled. Maybe the fact that China is emitting a little more carbon today is actually gonna affect the weather in you know, Egypt in three weeks. And all of that could be fully modeled. In the same way, if you take a complete view of a human being now, you know, I model everything about you. The question is, can I predict your next step? Probably, but at how far? And if it's a little further, is that because of stochasticity and sort of chaos properties of unpredictability of beyond a certain level, or was that actually true free will? Yeah, yeah. So the number of variables might might be so. You might need to uh, build an entire universe to uh, to to be able to, to simulate model. a human, yeah, to, and then maybe that human will be fully simulatable. But, but maybe aspects of free will will exist, and where's that free will coming from? It's still coming from the same neurons, or maybe from a spirit inhabiting these neurons. But again, you know, it's very difficult empirically to sort of evaluate where does free will begin and sort of chemical reactions and electric signals and, you know, end.